Welcome to segment three of the Granite School District 2013 School Community Council train. This segment is directed in particular to chairs and vice chairs. However, anyone can benefit from the information. Uh, this session should last around eight to ten minutes. Um, but with respect to that, if you do have additional questions or uh, with respect to the information being presented, I suggest you also review segment one and segment two located in the same location on our YouTube channel and uh, these videos were all disseminated at the same time so I encourage you to look at that that information and uh, the handbook and then let me know if you do have additional questions. My contact information uh, my name is Ben Forsley with Granite School District my contact information can be found in the front of the electronic version of the School Community Council handbook um, addition my direct line to my office is 385-646-4529 so don't hesitate to, to let me know if you do have questions that come up as a result. Uh, first and foremost, I just want to address the uh, officer responsibilities. Officers should be elected at your first meeting of each council year, and that should happen every year. Um, this officer-specific training is a requirement of the law, and that is why we are providing it. Um, there is some specific information in those in officer responsibilities within the handbook that we provide to you as well. Uh, you can always go to schoollandtrust.org as well, and there's some information specific to chairs and vice chairs there. Now remember, uh, councils can elect a chair and a vice chair. The chair must be a parent member, but the vice chair can be either. It is not appropriate for councils to have co-chairs anymore. Co-chairs are a thing of the past. It's not co-presidents. Uh, the statute specifically requires a chair that is a parent member and a vice chair that can be either a parent or an employee member of the school community council. Remember, principals may not serve as an officer, although they are a, a voting member of the school community council. Going back to the first bullet, uh, when I say the first meeting of each council year, sometimes a council will have a, a meeting in September previous to the new members being voted in or previous to the election where new members would be voted in. That is not the meeting that should occur in. It's the new meeting uh, with the new council as dictated by the law. Once your elections are completed, hopefully by the end of September, and your officers are elected, uh, just a reminder to please send your updated and completed rosters to the communications office and the, the contact information we have provided. Uh, anytime there's a change in your council, we need to have that updated information uh, to relay with our district community council information, to provide other timely updates uh, to you with respect to the law and, and requirements of the law. Uh, so just please make sure those rosters get updated in a timely manner. Don't leave that up to your principal. That is really should be in the purview of the chair and the vice chair to, to lead out in this parent-driven process uh, that we call school community councils. As uh, we review the officer responsibilities at your first council meeting, that, is, that should be uh, one of your agenda items, and, and those responsibilities are outlined on pages 17 and 18 in our handbook. Just a reminder that uh, that handbook should be reviewed on a regular basis as one of your agenda items uh, on an ongoing basis throughout the school year, not just a one-time thing. I want to just give you some quick tips with respect, with respect to meeting minutes, as that is some one of the changes in the law. Uh, remember your meeting minutes should, they don't have to be word for word everything that Bob said in the course of his discussion on your school land trust goals. Now, what they should indicate is the purpose of the meeting along with the date, time, and location. It should have a list of attendees including those who are visiting. And I encourage our school community councils to have a sign-in sheet with the completed roster information that the, the members can just sign indicating that they were there and then the visitors can just fill in that information at the bottom. Slap that to your meeting minutes and uh, scan it all in and put it on your, your school websites. It's really the easiest way to do that. Um, however, uh, please make sure that attendees are listed in your meeting minutes however you decide to do that. Brief summaries of discussion are very appropriate along with the motions and outcomes and roll call votes if it is a funding decision. Remember, roll call votes are where we actually dictate who voted in which fashion. Bob voted yes, Sally voted no, etc. Uh, you know, meeting minutes, is, if they're good and they're complete, meaning not detailed per, word for word, but detailed in the summary, the discussion, the outcome, the time of, the, of, that was spent on those issues, can really be great for uh, outlining assignments and reviewing as part of your next meeting 
I've, we've all been in a meeting where we can't remember who was assigned to do what, so make sure your meeting minutes reflect uh, those assignments so that there is some level of accountability. Take note of your time, your start time, your end time, and the lengths of the discussion. If you're reviewing your school land trust plan and it takes four minutes, write four minutes. You don't have to write four minutes in 28 seconds, but four, four and a half minutes would be just fine. Uh, with respect to your agendas, we wanted to... Uh, this has been a point of emphasis and one of the new uh, constraints on the law that these agendas be distributed a week in advance and uh, maintained on your school websites. So we want to make sure that you develop a consistent and standard order of business that should include, at a minimum, a call to order, approval of minutes with some reports, mostly probably by your principal or those who had other assignments related to school community councils, and new business, you're going to have a handbook moment on there where you review the law or the statute or some, some principle of the handbook. You're going to review your progress. There could be a report on your progress of uh, your school land trust plan. You could have uh, some standard things on there on an ongoing basis to help you uh, conduct your business in an orderly fashion. As we consider uh, the requirement to adopt rules of order and procedure, I would encourage you, we provided some electronic suggestions that are pretty extensive, but at the bottom there, there's also a website, statelandtrust.org, and they provide some tips on rules of order and procedure to govern your meetings. That would include your parliamentary procedures, um, any ethical behavior and civil discourse to ensure our meetings are, are conducted appropriately. These should have a very simple and consistent structure, but uh, being clear and concise and outlined the parameters of how your discussion should occur. They should all also take into account how votes are taken and they should provide uh, appropriate opportunities for everyone to participate in the meeting, including visitors. And this is really up to you as a chair and a vice chair to ensure that as you have matters of discussion that you go around the room and make sure everybody has a chance to share comments. Oftentimes we have people who monopolize meetings and sometimes these people get involved in our school community councils and we certainly welcome their input but we want to make sure that the time is not monopolized to the point where we don't have everyone's input. Now with respect to visitors I hear complaints about visitors showing up and throwing in their comments anytime they want. That's not necessarily appropriate. Visitors should be allowed to participate, attend and participate, but there should be some uh, dictate uh, in your rules of order and procedure of how they can participate. Remember, your meetings are held in the public. They are not public meetings. Nobody would go down to the legislature, walk on the floor of the legislature, and start spouting off. There is a rule of order and procedure of how somebody who is visiting gets to participate with the legislature, and that generally occurs in a committee meeting. Similarly, our board meetings at the school board level, at the district level, occur in the same fashion. They are not public meetings, meaning anybody can come say what they want. They are meetings that are held in the public's view, and there are opportunities dictated through policy and procedure for how a visitor may participate in those meetings. And school community councils should have no less standards of ensuring appropriate opportunities for those individuals to participate. And so that should be outlined and dictated in a clear fashion in your rules of order and procedure. Now that is really the basis of our, our presentation today. This is, has taken about seven and a half minutes. As a chair or vice chair, please ensure that you email us at communications at graniteschools.org and let us know that you've taken this training, which segment you've taken, and uh, so that we can give you credit for, for doing so. That's going to be part of uh, the reports that we keep at the district level with respect to the type of training that we provide to our, our great school community council members. As always, if you have questions, um, I want to remind you and emphasize the fact that as a chair and vice chair, you should really be putting these agendas together. Your principal should be a guide on the side, and this should be a parent-driven process starting with you. So if you do have questions, it's appropriate to bring your principal into those conversations to sit down with them and help put together agendas, but this is not something that you should allow them to, to monopolize or that you should monopolize yourself. This should be a, a partnership together. They're a guide on the side, and you are the sage on the stage. So make sure that you are controlling those meetings, that you're ensuring they're uh, rolling out in an appropriate fashion, and to make sure they're not long. Uh, we want to make sure that our parents have meaningful ways to, op, uh, to participate without having to spend hours upon hours in a meeting. Um, and so uh, 
generally your business should be able to be conducted within a matter of an hour if not 90 minutes at the at the most and so uh, please take that into consideration as you put your agendas together once again if you do have any questions or concerns you can always call me and I'm happy to help you I'm happy to attend your meeting and give uh, counsel and guidance and support you in your role as chair and vice chair thank you so much for your participation today uh, my contact information again is listed in the handbook and uh, provided my phone number at the beginning of this, uh, this session. So uh, please let us know if you do have any questions and have a great day.